What's up? It's the keys to success with me, and we're gonna be talking to Eugenia Washington. This is the homie. So we're about to invite. Let's see. Let's bring it in. Waiting on Eugenia. Waiting on Eugenia. She just she's on the West Coast, so it's like eight o'clock her time. So let's see. Oh wait, so she is. Let's invite her. Let's invite. Let's see if she gets the invite. She about to come in here stunning. Watch, watch, watch. That's weird. <laughs> she's, just gonna, she's gonna pop up on the screen and just be beat <laughs> for no absolute fucking reason. Come on, why is this not working? Let's see. Invite my girlfriend. Invite it. Invite to join. Let's see if she's gonna get it. It's just so weird because now that I switched all of the conversations to YouTube, I mean to Instagram, it's like we have to do it here and then put it on YouTube. So I like, I figure this out every time. Eugene is unable to join. Um, First of all, sorry, let me see. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Like <laughs> she's the one that did you. That's a damn lie. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> <laughs> What's Gucci? <laughs> Mind you, I'm sitting there, as I was sitting there waiting, I'm just like talking to people. And I was like, I'm trying to figure it out because it's like, I'm switching it over to IG. And I'm like, while I'm sitting there trying to figure it out, I said, wow, she's just going to pop up beat. <laughs> and the office, like, you just pop up, you like. No, and I'm sitting there like, how, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? Right, I'm trying to figure out IG anyway. First of all, virtual hug, yo, what's Gucci? How are you? I know the last time we've been in each other's space, like we can't, like we couldn't link up, and then you was away, I was away, all that kind of stuff, and everything. But yes, Eugenia Washington, and it was. Uh, thank you for doing it. It was crazy because I'm like, as I'm reaching out to people that I have like extreme interest in, I always run it past them, and it's like our friendships. They're always like, wait, wait, what the fuck are you going? To be? <laughs> you like what the? But no, it literally is just like me getting to know like the people I know. And I love so like thank you. I think that's perfect. How was your trip first off before I go into it? Um my trip uh New Orleans. We'll get into it, we'll get into it. No, I am trying to recover. Oh wow, it was that. Well, you know, I was away and I'm getting audio. Wait, hold on, hold on. Can you hear me? I can. can you, you hear, can hear me? me? Now, now I can hear you. I think it was like dipping in and out. <laughs> okay, this is the situation. I have to like elevate my phone. Okay, so. Okay, what do you want? What do you want? Your cell phone? I'm on my cell phone. Me too. Mind you, it's so it's it's like Banji, but like you know. I know. It's like, it gets the job though. Tabitha Brown, I was watching her um thing. She said, like, I don't know who needs to hear this. But baby, start them videos. Start the, that was I heard you, Tab. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. No, so no, I'm no. Just, like, I'm it out. Okay, let me go on and do. Let me go right, on. Right, right. So mind you, okay, the only first question I ask everybody when I invite them on, first question is, how did we meet? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> everybody does that. They're like, oh. I have enough blush on. <laughs> Can I apply more? I'm not going to be able to do this unless I do that. Put it on while we're talking. Okay, give me two seconds. Go ahead. She's about to put a blush on, y'all. Come on, dude. This is the funniest fucking story. What's up, y'all? Thank everybody for watching. Let me see if I know anybody. It's light now because, you know, it's it's East Coast late, West Coast turn up. Mm. How do I look? I was thinking about putting on a filter for Eugenia, but I couldn't. <laughs> You put on some face. You put on a little something. Little, it's yeah. a little dust. It's a little yeah, dust. I it. Mind you, I love how you put your blush for like the thing. But yeah, yeah. like I, uh, the iceberg that I always ask everybody is, how did we meet? So like, oh, do you remember? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, tell me. So tell me, about, tell me about how we met. Okay. Okay. I'm better now. Okay. Well, now you're chewing. Because now when you fall out, it's like. <laughs> Okay, see you 
So, oh my gosh, this is how we met. In 2017, we were on a shoot with Shemayam, this photographer, right? <laughs> and and, and um, the first thing you said to me, I was like, oh my God, he's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Do you remember when, I don't remember what I said. I remember, I, I remember just, showing up. What did I say? You, uh, uh, you had on like, you, you brought these like Balmain gowns. And this like big like this Balmain jacket that um, Shemai was wearing. Yes, yes, yes. Body and shit. And I said, um, oh, taking pics for the gram. You know the model. <laughs> right, right, right. I said, uh, oh, I said, oh, okay. Well, how'd you get that? And you said, because I'm that bitch. <laughs> 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 Yo, mind you, I called in so many, I called in so much stuff on the thing. So it was like, so when Shemayam had reached out to me, ironically, I did not know who Shemayam was. Mm -hmm. um, the guy, Biz, Busy, that was doing the videography. Busy, um, the, yeah. Yeah, Busy. So B me and Biz worked together on projects in New York. Mm -hmm. So he was like, you know, we're shooting this coffee table book. Like, you would be great to like X, Y, Z. And I'm like, you know, Biz, you know, some people like you love them. So you're just like, child, whatever you want. You know, I got you. So we jumped on the thing. And as I'm sitting there with Shemai, I'm like, he's just breaking it down. Like, you know, the girls that are going to be there. And I was just like, you know, Shemai, like, it helps me see the girls because then I can navigate what's going on. And the place that we shot was that car, that, that vintage car place. So he sends me the deck for, like, the next day. And I'm looking, I was like, this is your to watch it. And I was like... And I was sitting there like, and I had a little fan girl moment, you know what I mean? Because I was like, because at first, like, most of the time, most of the girls that he was using were newer models mm -hmm. and, like, local girls. So I'm just sitting there like, I was like, bitch, she's not new. Like, what is this, like, going on? But he explained that y'all had, like, a relationship and <laughs> that you had, like, agreed to do it. So I was like, yo, this is dope as hell. And then I knew you could fit everything. Mm -hmm. So it was just, like, it was just popping. But that day just turned into, like, all day, I, I would have never thought that you, like, we would have built such a, a cool, like, <laughs> rapport, but it was. It was just crazy that whole day. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it was so ridiculous. All, I kept up with all of the boys from that, too. It was, a, it was a great thing. Only your day was, like, in the car shop, but we went we're around to Vizcaya and all of these other places in Florida. He really shot a really beautiful... Did you see the finish? No, because we had a falling out. Shut up, you and Shemayam. A falling out. I have not talked to him since then. Should I say it on the the, the radio, the hotline? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a chat, it's a chat. Shemayam ain't on here, but like, we could, you know, it is what it is. It, was it bad? You all got to go into deets, though. No, I'm just saying, this is how I felt. Yeah. I felt that he had a, a I'm not going to put words in nobody's mouth. But I felt that he had a crush on me. I definitely would concur. Right? And so he was treating me mean. Okay. It was one of those, uh, you know, I like this girl, so I'm going to just be mean to her sort of thing. And I was like, first of all. It was a little passive aggressive. Very passive aggressive. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I moved a lot of stuff around to show up for him because, you know, it's my friend. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm going to shoot for you because we always do great work. So, mm -hmm. like, I had a job that day. No, I was supposed to do a panel that day in Atlanta. I moved it around to show up for him. And, like, he didn't even say hi to me when I got there. He was just like, oh, hey. I was like. <laughs> but, you know, he, he's also, like, he's vegan. So, you know, those niggas be lightheaded. Like, they be real lightheaded. I didn't even have to come there. And that's what I told him. I was like, dude, I didn't even have to show up. You know, yeah. I I'm not going to hold you. I like, I like I said, like my fangirl moment. Like I was just like, Shemaya, that's you, Gina. Like I was like, it was a, to me, it's just like you, you're a big deal. You know what I mean? So I was just like, knowing that book. Not to say it wasn't a big deal, but I just knew, you know, it, it's different when a girl has like a, a rapport established. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you do a favor for somebody because it is a big difference. You do expect certain things, and that's what I'm saying. And put me in the best outfits. He didn't give me the best makeup. He didn't even give me the best, like, just scenario. He was, yeah. give, was giving it to the light-skinned girls. And he kept commenting about 
you know, because he, I feel like he was a little bit colorist, and I was the only dark skin girl there. You and, were, you were. Wow. Uh, and you I, know what? It's so funny, like, even saying that now, because I think, you know, maybe just a couple years ago, it wouldn't have been so sensitive to the ear to, like, go back and actually see that. But I, I do remember that. That's crazy. Yeah. And so I was just And they like, liked you in the same time, though. But that's in right. the same time. But, like, my pictures were not the best. And I, I recognized that when I shot with him, my pictures were never the best. And, and like, I want the best stuff. But he always yeah. gave me the leftovers. You know, he put the other girl in this big, nice, like, the, the, the nice outfits. And I was like, but she's new. Yeah. You did, not that you, you, everything that you pulled was great, but some things were more. Yeah. Nothing. Some of some of the clothes, like I definitely, when I was doing like the run of show, I was just in my mind, I'm like, I want that on Eugene, like just because it it's that moment, like you want that your moment. Show. Naomi, you know, like Naomi moment. said, she said, why do you gotta fight for your high heels, bitch? Like right. you gotta fight for you. And he bring the moment to other girls as if I just wasn't there. Yeah. And so I had to, and then, but I was nice the whole time. Yeah. And then when it was right, time for me to leave, like, he didn't even, he was kneeling down. He didn't even give up to hug me. I was like, Shemayim, bye, you know? <laughs> and so, like, are you going to hug me or something? Like, I came all the way over here. And yeah. So I was just, I was just in a mood where I was just fed up. And so I had to cuss him the fuck out because you're just not going to utilize me. Like yeah, that. period. Period. And that's, that's so crazy because it's like, knowing that now, you know, I... I wouldn't have never, like, even thought that. I definitely did think that he liked you, though. Like, I just picked that up. But he has this kind of debonair, I'm a photographer. Um, but I'm like, dude, <laughs> you take pictures just like the rest of them. Come on now. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, I know you work with a lot of new girls, so then you seem elevated to them. But for me, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how, long like, had, how long had y'all been friends? For, like, five years. OK, yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> And he's talking about I'm his muse, and he like. Not you, not you, not you. You almost fall for the I'm your muse hat. I never fall for the. I'm I was gonna say, Eugenia, you are not a kitten. You are not a kitten. You were like, not, you know, you my muse. You were like, boy, if you don't get the fuck. <laughs> you don't get the fuck. I, so I was just like, okay, I'm allow you to say that. Yeah. yeah. But like, I'm not feeling on top of it. I just want to come here, get the work done, and be respected for what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. So, I, didn't do that. so I, I I had to get him together, and then I blocked him on all all everything, and that was the last time he was able to shoot me. Yeah, so, there That's you go. Up. Yeah, it's crazy. To, and to any constellation, like honestly, your your photos came out. They were just like, but you know, I just thought that it was just great. Well, they are not good, but they could have been better. You yeah, know? they could have been rock socket. It's like rock socket. <laughs> I yeah. will. I, I swear to you, I will never forget from that thing is when we were leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in the car, it's me, you, and Madge. Madge, the makeup artist. And Madge is just on the highway giving ease on down the road. And we're just in there chopping it up. And then eventually, because you were going back to Cali. And I was about we, to make a flight. Your <laughs> flight was leaving, and I, I swear to you, like, maybe 30, 30 something minutes. Like, and you already had your bag. You like, I don't got to check shit. And we're just in there. And Madge is driving like, you know, oh, I'm going as fast as I can. And you literally lean up from the seat. And you was like, would you mind if I drove? And I was like, you two just bought the cabby. So watch you, she pulls over in the highway. You get in that motherfucking seat. And it was like the whole thing happened in all of 10 seconds. All you heard was the seatbelt go, trick her. And you said, <laughs> Got that motherfucking seat adjusted. <laughs> Looked like this on the highway. I was hitting it with the one arm. <laughs> I was and, like, this bitch is crazy. We are chewing it down this highway. I mean, you are weaving in and out like a little arm, but you were doing it with one hand. It was so motherfucking savage. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> this girl is like, but then and it's my first time meeting you. You were in the cut with your arm on the seat. Like, and then, like a nigga, like, <laughs> we get to the airport. All you heard was, you was like, all right, y'all, hit me with the kiss. 
And then literally, I texted you, and you was like, I was like, did you make your flight? She's like, yeah, I'm on the plane. I was like, yo. It was literally, that shit was like hilarious. Because it was, was literally. She was not about to make me late. This girl was in, we were in traffic. She she was driving so slow. Oh and Madge God. is older. You know, she's older, but you could just tell she was not used to like LA traffic. and just like, I mean, Miami traffic. And she was just like taking her time. And I'm sitting there like, yo, this girl is going to do best off flight. And you would, you could see it getting antsy. Like, you was like, baby, listen, do you mind if I just like, <laughs> Nah, that shit was hilarious. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> that was How, okay. It was funny as hell. Cause I think it set it set the it set like the foundation of our friendship of just I love shit like that. You know what I mean? I like energy and all that kind of stuff. Somebody to speak up, do their thing. And you was being polite, and I could see it like building up. I was like, no, nah, sis is about to be her little point. She's about to be trouble. You like, baby, you mind if I drive? Max was in the seat. She clicked her little shit. Was holding up to the thing. I'm in the back, like ah, <laughs> looking like Kim. Bitch. I was like, ah, she's talking to weaving on these niggas. No, nah, I mean, it was it was a good time. I I love that first meeting story. I thought I thought it was dope. So mind you, it was uh, when we got back to New York, and then like when we would hang out afterwards, as I was like sharing my stuff. One of my friends did recognize you from like uh, old work, and he was like, "Oh my god!" He said, "You know, that's the girl from Playboy." Mm -hmm. I a hundred percent had no idea of that, and I was just like, "No!" I was just like, "I remember America's Next Top Model." Yes. Do which one do you? Do, which one do you get recognized for the most? Do you think? You know what's funny? As of late, like literally, as of the past like two months. Top model has like come back around in my life in a major way. Like people have been <laughs> recognizing me for that. Like every what, season, what, what was your season? What number? Uh, seven. Cycle seven. Seven. Yeah, this was two thousand and five. Yeah, so it's uh, but everybody was like bring it up. You know, the, the girls go digging now on like Twitter and all of yeah. that kind of stuff because it was it was like circular. But now people like go through and they recognize you more from that. Yeah, they recognize me. They recognize me more from that than 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 Playboy, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's just been weird because it's it's like it's almost like super fans have been coming out, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, this is this is kind of cool. And the thing is, I, I like it now. I can appreciate it now because before we were unable to talk about it legally. We were like bound. Yeah. How how long after how long after like a production are you allowed to? Ten years. Oh wow! Yeah. So because they wanted to control the whole entire narrative, so mm -hmm. it was like it was a weird dynamic because that was really something that happened in my life. Like that. Yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. A journey in my life. Like people, some people went to college. I went on a TV show when I was nineteen. <laughs> right. you know, and it's kind of like you be like. <laughs> it's a real thing. Like it was a real life experience that I like grew up in and kind of was traumatized from and had to learn from and like that really? was my villain origin story kind of mm. so for me, I have to pretend like it never happened and just like go yeah. with my weird like a disconnect so now i'm able to talk about it i have talked about it publicly on like uh the youtube show with oliver twix i, I spoke my piece about it you know and i'm able to actually be honest about it mm. and it's of people are are recognizing me from it i can actually embrace it and be happy about like the thing that actually happened in my life you know yeah. you were like almost you were like one of the finalists yeah it was top three yeah was mm -hmm. it um how, how was everything after like what you went through because now you said that like now it's it was traumatic a little bit but like what did what how helped did I, you move what helped you move on how did i move on well um I couldn't do anything until after the show was done airing, or after my episode was done airing. So I was on the last episode. So I had to wait until the whole, the whole shebang happened, the whole season happened. And then right after that, like a day later, uh, the stylist, Curtis Davis, called me on my house phone. I don't know how he got my number. Um, and he was like, we love you on South, from South Pole. We want you to do a, a campaign for us. Remember South Pole? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was like. South Pole, that's all so the throwback. 
Listen, that was during a time of rock aware and uh, yeah, yeah, South Pole when the girls were eating. John, like, John, Adrian. eating. Everybody yes. had a bag. Yes, so I did South Pole with Mario, the singer. Mm. They flew me to Miami, and uh, yeah, I did this big campaign for them. That was like my very first job in the industry, like was a campaign for South Pole. And it was like a, a billboard in Times Square. It was like ads all over the newspaper. I will say this, not newspaper, but like uh, magazines and shit. Yeah. I will say this though, I did not know how much I should have gotten paid for that. Oh, really? Yeah, and looking back, I got paid only three thousand dollars for that. And that's two thousand. That was six. Oh wow! It was a whole campaign, like. Yeah. Did global. you have an agent at the time? No, they just. Oh yeah, you were new. You were doing everything on your own. I had no idea. This was like the day after my sh my episode aired, so I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, we want to book you now, so let me know. And I couldn't call anybody. It's not like I had Tyra's number. I tried to call the network. They were like, uh, you have reached the wrong number. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. God forbid you try to call a cell phone. Like, that. You feel me? <laughs> so I just didn't know how to handle it. Yeah. And uh, they were like, you know, we're going to pay you $3,000 for this. And at the time, that was a lot of money for me. And, yeah, and you just hit a number like, bitch, yeah, I was going to throw it up. I was like, okay, you know? And, but thinking back, I'm like, that was like, that was like a $25,000 job. Yeah, and, especially a campaign because it's like, the, like they run and then you get different deliverables for where it goes, like Billboard, Mag. It was a three-day shoot. Let's so start there. Yeah. So, like, even if we're talking day rate, you know what I mean? It yeah. should have been my day, my day rate should have been 3000 just for the day rate. Yeah. So it should have been uh, 3, 6, 9, just to shoot it. And then on top of that, the deliverables and everything should have been at least twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was um, I've never, so it's funny because like when I used to do styling work and things of that nature, I never found it beneficial to have an agent at that time only mm -hmm. because I, I feel like I was working in music and doing things like that. Did you find the same thing like doing modeling? Was it easier or was it like you're really paying somebody to find work, but it's not balancing out? No. Back then, you needed an agent or else wasn't shit going to happen for you. I mean, like modeling models, modeling agents, models and modeling agents, that is... Um, that is something that used to be something that was like they keep a tight knit on that you know what i mean they're yeah, it's like a marriage yeah there's that's like your key to the industry they don't even fuck with you unless you have an agent you know and then there's the top 10 agents and if you're in a top 10 agency then you get the better jobs and you have top 10 agents and then you get those those jobs and you know what i mean so people yeah. want to talk to you they won't even take you take you seriously mm -hmm. unless you're... it's different now. But back then, like they people wanted their agents wanted their money, and uh, brands needed that. It was it was what could I say? It's like a it's like a uh, it's like clout. It's like hierarchy. It's like yeah, you know people people want to make money off of girls. They want to yeah, make yeah, yeah. get their cut off of a girl. Do you think it's um? Do you think it's gotten better or worse? It's gotten better because with social media now, like, you, I can go directly to the source. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, you know, because now you have so much access to really get mm -hmm. yourself out there. And, like, you know, of course, it's different for, like, models versus stylists and all of that. But, and I don't do, like, the styling thing anymore. But back then, it would, you guys, it was a marriage, you know. Yeah. But now it's just, like, you have all of these outlets. You can share your stuff. It's almost like music. A lot of the labels and all of that kind of stuff. Do you still do you still do a lot of modeling? I model for brands that I love. I dropped, well, I parted from my agency because just being a black woman in fashion is just hard. A black yeah. woman in 
that as hard. Africans, they treat differently because they have different features, they're darker, and I feel like they uh, look at African girls as pure. Hmm. And, That's a yeah, and, and they respect them more, I feel like. Uh, but for African American girls, they. Yeah. I know, yeah. but my, um, I'm really close with a Jack. A Jack Daniels. Yeah. yeah, love, love, love. Her and the core and all of them. And like they were suiting these girls and like with the conversation that they would have just about the industry, it was very similar. Like just how they felt like they were pedestal, but also just not kind of taking care of the white way, you know? Oh yeah, they're not gonna take care of us. They're definitely pedestal, you know. Yeah. But they're not taking care of. I mean some of those girls do need, you know, certain types of care based on where they come from. Like, you know, Sudanese girls and stuff like that. Because a lot of them come from, um, a lot of them are escaping, you know, war zones and this and that. And then they come to America and go into the fashion industry, which is another war zone. You yeah. know, so <laughs> a whole different type of battle. <laughs> It's a whole different, yeah, it's a whole different type of battlefield. Like, I, I, I would say, like, being able to be invited into those intimate conversations that we would have, like, cooking dinner at my house and stuff, it was, like, a lot of times, it'd be, like, heart prints. You'd be like, bitch, like, that's a lot to really go through, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Did you ever have, like, depressing moments, like, in that roster? Did I have depressing moments? Um... Um, I had moments where I felt like I was not, uh, what's the word? Appreciated? Uh, appreciated, taken seriously. I wasn't seen. I mean, it, if I'm honest, I realized that everybody in the industry has watched Top Model mm. and and people remember my face from that, and I didn't recognize that until recently. Like, you know, a lot of people in the industry watched it. They recognized my face, and they recognize and they saw the the uh, storyline that was placed on me, which is Eugenia thinks she's all that. She needs to humble herself. And so I, <laughs> it's like pick a storyline out the hat, bitch. It's like that's. So and so I experienced a lot of that in my real in my in my real journey, like. I would want to like go to London or I want to work with certain photographers or I want to do certain things. I had mm -hmm. these big ideas and big dreams and it was always, Eugenia, humble yourself. Like, we'll do this for you. You're, you're doing too much. And it'd be like, bitch, I don't, I'm not even hearing all that. Like, I have this face, I have this body, I have this personality, let's just go get this money. Like, don't try to tire me right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like with working with agencies, um, being on that show, also being Black American, also being like not outspoken but assertive about what I want, and also just being a beautiful Black woman is revolutionary and it's offensive to people because people don't want you to have what you. People don't think you deserve what you want to have. You know, mm. people don't think that you deserve. People don't think that you uh, should have your dreams. Mm. You know. People don't see back then. They didn't see black girls in Sports Illustrated. So how dare you even bring that up? You know, they didn't see black girls in Victoria's Secret. So Eugenia, how dare you even bring that up? Yeah. So it's stuff like that that I had to face. It was like, I don't give a damn what you look like. The answer is just no. And so it was hard for me. And I got to a place where it was like, I was feeling trapped inside of my body. Because I was like, how do I have all of this, but it just isn't working out the way that I see it, you know? Um, and so I just had to just say, fuck them and do it myself, you know? Yeah. I did that myself. I just got that. I got all my big jobs. Playboy, even AMT, of course, I got that myself. Um, all my commercials that I did, I got them all myself. Mm -hmm. I got my agents, and when I would bring that to my agents, like, you know, because I did two cover girl commercials with Sam Fine and Queen Latifah, and they were just like, mm, good for you, you know? Whereas when I asked them before, they're like, Eugenia, they're, you know, we don't want to send you because we don't think you're good enough. So I would actually come back to LA. Other would send me, and I would go in and I would book it. 
And so they would kind of be like jealous. My New York agents would be jealous and upset. So I just did not need that type of bullshit. I just need yeah. people just in my way, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, after event like eventually, it's almost like I can do this shit on my fucking own. Like just, you're taking on people's yeah. stress, people's egg, like all of that kind of stuff. And then you're literally just owning it all your goddamn self. And then it starts to beat up on your shit wear and tear on me because it did make me feel like I wasn't good enough. It did make me feel like, well, damn, what else? Who, I have to be someone else. And I had a moment where I was like, well, I have to try to be someone else. Like, I did not like being this and having this. Like because, imposter syndrome? No, it was oh. like, don't work. Like, this phase, this body, like, this shit's not working. I have to try to do something else. Gotcha. And Went through a point in my life where I rejected myself because I felt like I was getting in the way of myself. Mm. And because I was dealing with a lot of jealous people. And let's be honest about the agents who are like Sarah Plain and Tall, you know, from Minnesota. And so you're working around a bunch, bunch of gorgeous women and you have uh, their lifeline. Like you have the key to their life. Like you can sit here and say, you're going to work. You're not going to work. You're going to work. You're not going to work. And, you know, you just Ashley from fucking Boom Cunk, Minnesota. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, and so there's a the power trip there. <laughs> it's real. No, that's so real. That's so I come up in there and, you know, with my personality and my face and all of this. And a lot of times they had, like, personal issues against me. And so it was just like, well, you know, I'm going to tell you, Gina, she ain't shit. There's a power there's a power dynamic when it has to do with the models and the agents. Because again, the agents aren't the most beautiful people. They're not the most in shape. They're not the most. Yeah. So it's just like, mind you, can you imagine them telling you like what to eat, everything? You were like, sweetie, you have a burger leaking down your hand like while you're trying to kill me. And I am not in any way fat shaming. <laughs> way. Disclaimer. Uh, before I say this, I am not in any way, you know, putting anybody down for their, like, the way that their body is, the way that their appearance is. I feel like everyone is beautiful, and I say that all the time. Find what's best and beautiful about you and, like, illuminate that shit. Everybody can't be what? a size. Everybody can't be a six, seven football player. Everybody can't be Einstein. Do you. You feel me? Yeah. But when I do your have best my, you. Do your best you. But when I have my agent Elizabeth that is 300 pounds. <laughs> Big Liz. <laughs> telling me, Eugenia, we just don't think you're good enough. Then I have a problem. Yeah. You know? And then that's a real issue. And they love doing that. They love taking these girls, us, and, like, making us feel like shit. Yeah. You got Barbary white guy that's his belly hanging over and he's leaning back in his chair and he's you know telling these young girls and us like uh you know her hair looks like shit today don't send her and it's like really crazy right that's bananas yeah so i was just like i can't be a part of that because it really fucks you up I, no model can come out and say she has the best self-esteem because the way they try to tear us down the way they try to tear us down. And I had to go through a whole thing to where, like, I rejected my face. I rejected, like, everything about me. And it was as of lately that I was like, well, you know what? I, I just have to be like, I'm gorgeous. I'm bomb as fuck. And, like, that's honestly what it is. Yeah. And I have to love that for myself. And I can't allow anybody, none of these man-made people, these raggedy-ass other you know, ass farm-raised bitches. You feel me? <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Like, I think that I, I feel like I met you coming out of that space then probably. No, you met me going into that space. Oh, good. I was into it. Like trying to figure out who I was because like I could not get no one to like just take me seriously. Just like stop with personal issues against my appearance and like let's make this money, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... How long, um, how long has it been, have you been kind of like shifted from it? A minute. <laughs> Not put on the lip gloss and be like, <laughs> <"Tow."> 
Listen, I'm going to be honest and say only 2022 because people don't let pretty girls chill. They don't let us chill. They don't let us just enjoy the shit. It's up for the pretty girls. Let me take her down. How the fuck do I take her down? They don't let us just chill with it. Like, if I... If that, my, I have a whole, like, I'm so interested into, like, going into that little part. Like, it's going to, that's going to be a layer. So hold on. What I do is I have to stop it. We got to go to, I call it commercial. So that I save the thing. And then I add you right back on because I want to talk about all of the pretty girl hate. All right. So we'll be right back. Okay.